Hey everybody, um, I'm here today to give you my uh, testimony of how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, how, how the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. Um, it's a video I've been, you know, I've, I've, I wanted to film a long time ago, it just never really came about, and then um, I've you know, gone over my testimony in my head, and it's just been difficult for me, okay, what do I include, what don't I include, and I had already filmed this once, I had talked for over two hours, and it was very dis disjointed and sloppy, and I don't really think I approved, um, you know, it really showed the best way I could my testimony and how the Lord saved me, and so I felt, you know, okay, I, I need to go back and um, really sit down and kind of just, you know, write out what I need to do, so... Um, I apologize ahead of time if this video seems kind of long. Um, I got a lot of things to say. And if I happen to look down a few times throughout the video, it's because I'm looking at my notes. I had to sit down and just actually write out what I wanted to say because I have so many stories, so many experiences. I was like, okay, I want to get this on paper. Just so I, I can kind of keep a flow and just keep everything, you know, good. Because, I, cause like, before, I, I took no notes. I just winged it and, like, and it, 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 I mean, it was pretty bad. It was really disjointed. So we're going to do it like this. And, um... I want to put a little disclaimer also and say this is not everything. Um, I'm you know I'm not going to be including every little thing that ever happened. Uh, obviously, I'm just including main events. But I will say I will be at some point in time uh, filming uh, more videos about my testimony. I already kind of did one already. I'll link in the description below. It's kind of how you know the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. You know evidence of you know the new birth that the Bible speaks about. I kind of did a video on that, so like I said, I'll link that in the description as being part of my testimony as well. But I will also do um, separate videos also um, on my um, epic rant. <laughs> it's probably, with, probably, probably what it's going to be about public schooling and because um, that was a big part of my life, and as you'll hear in my testimony. And also my uh, sports testimony, that was another big part of my life. And a lot of stories with that that I'll definitely you know, played in. You know, to you know, to you know, to this video as well. You know, I'm saying is my main testimonial um, video. So I'll be doing a video on that, and I don't know when those will be coming out. Um, just um, I, I will leave a link in the description when they do come out. Um. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna kind of get into my testimony, just kind of who I was, my early, you know, early life, and then all the way up to um, when I was saved, and then kind of you know how um, or what happened after I got saved. And uh, I want to say one, one more thing quick before I begin. Um, I do have a bit of a stuttering issue, so if at, one, if at some points during the video, if I start to stutter or some things become, you know, hard of hearing, like I don't pronounce some things very good or I get like really, really, really fast talking, I apologize. It's just something I've I've struggled with my entire life, and uh, so I just want to give that disclaimer uh, ahead of time. If uh, for those who have seen my other videos, you kind of know that already, but um, whatever else. So. Let's get into the the main um, video here. So, for those who don't uh, do not know, my name is uh, Jacob Thompson. Um, I was born on September nineteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Here, um, and uh, I still live my my uh, my uh, dad's house. Here's where I was born, raised in. It's where I still currently live in right now. Um, the little uh, town of Granger, Indiana, and it's located right right on the border of Southern Michigan. Um, that's and that's it's a very um, you know, wealthy town, uh, very snooty, very uptight. Um, this I mean this this town really hasn't been really strapped for money, you know. I mean during the recession it kind of was, but I mean it's all and like I said, and it is a term I always kind of came up with. And as my as to my dad, he always called it like a silver spoons, and that's a good way to put it. That's kind of what Granger is, just very high class, you know, you know, you know, pinky out, you kind of <laughs> kind of thing. I'm just joking, of course, but. You know, the point is very, you know, high and very stuffy. And uh, it's also, again, um, it's about, give or take, depending on traffic, about 15 minutes away from the University of Notre Dame. That's the one of the largest Catholic universities in the world. Again, very well known. Most people know it for their football, which, again, I'll, I'll mention kind of here and there throughout the video and eventually my sports testimony. But anyway, let's see what we got. I have right here. Um... So just to kind of give a quick background about my parents, my dad, he was a, um, well, he is a uh, very successful drywaller, and I'm not just saying that because he's my dad, I'm saying that because, you know, he is, he's gotten multiple accolades and awards uh, for the work he's um, he's done. I mean, he's worked on, the, like, like multi-billion dollar mansions and done some, like, very, very impressive work, um, and he also used to be in a, a hair metal band, um, I forget when 
ex the, the years exactly he was in it, but he was in a, uh, he a heavy metal band, and um, it was actually successful. Um, he actually you know got record deals with uh, I believe it was Universal Records, I believe it was Studios, something like that. He can correct me on that if I'm wrong, um, but I believe that's what it was. And he actually um, his he was a bass player, and his uh, drummer, one of them, was uh, his name was uh, Jake Sinninger. And for those who don't know who that is, he um, is now the uh, very famous uh, guitar player for the band Humphreys McGee. And uh, he would and Jake Sinninger he'd be over at my house all the time because again we have a recording studio in my uh, in my basement, you know, of my dad's house. I'm, I'm saying. And uh, they would produce a lot of music, so he'd be over all, almost all the time. And so, you know, uh, definitely a lot of music was definitely a big influence in my life. And um, but he was always over, always recording music. And um, now, and so I, I can say I know a famous rock star, <laughs> kind of a thing. Not that I really care, but you know, I can say that. Anyway, which it's not important, but I just thought I'd mention that. And also, my mom, she's a dental hygienist. Um, she's still continually. Uh, doing that and she spent most of her um, you know, my early years uh, watching me um, you kind of taking care of me for the in the younger years um, you know you know to birth to I don't know really about um, 10 I would say is when she started to get back to the workforce it might have been just a little bit later because because when she started working she wasn't working very much at all but eventually it evolved into her working more um, anyway just to kind of you know, kind of get into my early life a little bit I went to a, um, a, a Presbyterian or not Presbyterian a, a Methodist uh, preschool and um, you know every day we would have you know prayer and um, uh, what you know whatever else and um, and, and, every, and they would bring us down to this place of you know place of worship and just call it that you know you know, like the you know like the you know, cliche kind of thing of uh, you know, uh, I would say a stereotypical view of a of a church building, the stained glass windows. You got the you know the pews and the pulpit and like the, you know, all that other stuff. And uh, you know, uh, they would mention you know, they talk about God and, and you know Jesus Christ and you know whatever else. But at that age, I really didn't care. I didn't understand really any of it. It was just kind of. It, it, it just kind of was like one ear not the other you know and a lot of it was just you know basically you know okay you know uh by basically almost all, all we basically all we really heard was this um uh, uh jesus loves you jesus loves you this jesus loves you that and just that's basically all we heard we really never really heard anything else but that i mean of course we did but again we're little kids we're not going to know we weren't brought up in the, in the nurture and admonition of the lord um you know, none of us were, so we didn't really know anything, and and I most certainly did not care at all. I remember a lot of times we would have you know like snack time, you know and we'd you know say like like a little prayer every single day, and and of course and, and uh, you know the the teacher whatever we, whatever you want to call her she would lead the prayer course, but um and I was just kind of sitting there going like just kind of like close my eyes not knowing what's really going on, just something myself like just give me the food, you know I don't know what we're doing, what's the point, you know whatever. Um, and then, um, oh, before I forget, and when I had graduated preschool, um, reached out to my bookshelf here, they had given um, this thing called uh, the Beginner's Bible. It's this little kid's Bible thing. Um, there's no like, real doctrine in it. It's just basically pictures and whatever else. You just, you know, you know, stories and whatever else. And, and it's very watered down, and uh, you know, and I actually have read through it twice, and uh, there are, you know, there's problems with it. I mean, well, you know, a lot of problems, but um, I, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't learn anything from this either, and I had no desire to even read this for the longest time. I think it was until actually like late elementary school that I actually finally sit down, and I actually start kind of reading it, and I remember just, I remember just hated going through it, I'm just like, oh, you know. Um, Again, you can kind of see this is what our preschool was, and thought that was kind of interesting. You were handmade by God, uh, New Salem Preschool, and um, so there you go. There, that's what the thing they gave, gave us. And I have a bunch of other stuff in preschool, but that's not really important. But we have that, and like I said, like, like, like I said, I had really no interest in God, and His Word, didn't really care. Um, and and uh, the only real, and uh, only really real, you know, church I had gone to was um, every uh, Easter. Every Easter Sunday, um, I'm not quite sure what denomination or sect it was. Um, I want to, I want to say it's a Protestant one for sure. Um, I don't think it was Catholic, but it, I would almost guarantee it was a Protestant one. 
I'm not quite sure which one. But every year we would I go there um, for Easter time, not not because you know I you know not because our family felt that we, you know, felt that you know like we had to go or something like that. No, we um, I just went solely for for the Easter egg hunt because um, then they they actually had a guy dressed up like an Easter bunny, and then we'd go out and we'd you know collect the Easter eggs and you know get the candy, get the money or whatever else, and then we'd go down to the basement, and then I'd see and then I remember I I always remember this. I always remember seeing all the the adults just it, 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 was like, it was yeah it was like this way every single year it's just them gossiping and this and this and this and then you know go take a picture with the easter bunny then you can like redeem your prizes and, and your tokens and your tickets whatever for other prizes and then i just cashed in more candy they had like other like bible stuff i but i was like i mean i made sure to like just stay clear because at that young age and i, I remember it's just at the age of like four and i don't know i don't know why i just can't remember this one in particular I remember the one time I actually was just like, I remember just the thoughts going through my mind. I just didn't even care about God. I was like, and I actually hated him to a degree at that young age and through all the television and junk I was watching. Because, you know, I looked I looked at that and I said, you know, okay, here's this. And then here's, you know, the secular you know world here. This is more fun and all, and all this other stuff. More fun and exciting for us kids and all. And then you bring that into the, you know, to the church building thing. It was the same thing, but now you're adding more rules and all that sort of stuff, and it just didn't make sense, and I didn't get it. And I actually, at one point, hated God's word. I actually, actually mocked at a, at a young age, if you can believe it, that just that. I just, I just, I was like, I, I don't care. Who cares? And and and, uh, and uh, um, to clarify too, I was not born in an atheistic house. I was born in a you know Christian home. But I mean, I, like I said, I was never told the gospel. I was never told about salvation. It was never really discussed. I was told, and I, you know, verbatim, I was told at a young age, just believe God. That's about all I was really told, so I just kind of, you know, believed God. And basically all that meant was, okay, I just kind of recognized there's some higher power being up in the cosmos somewhere. You know, that's really what kind of boiled down to. Um, I think I also want to say from there. So, no, another thing too about me at such a young age, and really for most of my life until I got saved I was a major TV addict and uh same with video games as well I mean I was playing you know um uh, shooters I, mean, uh, I remember one of them was like uh, uh, Halo it was like when I was very young I didn't play that one too much my my dad my parents weren't like they weren't wouldn't allow me to play those kind of games um at all it was just like that one like rare moment I I seem to remember but uh, you know, of course, when I got older, I played a lot of more aggressive games and very disgusting games, like Grand Theft Auto, for example, was one of them. And but like I said, I was a very, very heavy TV act. I'm, and uh, if you've ever seen those pictures where, where they see like those kids like staring, like staring like right in front of like the TV screen type of thing, that was me. Like that, like that was me. And I'm not exaggerating. That was, I'd have like a chair. I remember I would sit in my in my uh, my, my parents' room because I'd get home from school or whatever, and then I would pick up the stool put like right in front of their tv and it's just like right in front of my face and i do that all day every day and just uh, i mean to this to this day i can actually if i can actually remember a lot of the shows I used to watch like like i know like thomas the train was a big one spongebob was another huge one i could i mean i could probably tell you and actually act out with you know perfect you, know, you know perfectly some of the episodes and I, i'm not i'm not i'm not exaggerating that's how bad it was um What's next here? Another, another thing too, though, um, a big heavy emphasis I was told by my parents and you know, and family was uh, you know your academics. Your academics are very important. You gotta you know, study, study, study at a very early age. So um, I took my you know my academics very seriously. My dad always really you know, especially my dad, really hammered. You need to pay attention to school, pay attention to your teachers, and it gets good. And you, you you'll hear the teachers and uh, I and my parents even, at one point even said this, but you hear the teachers they'll actually tell you this. And I remember back in kindergarten, they even said, you know, like you know, you treat me, you know, this is the you know the teacher here, you treat me like you treat your parents, you know, you listen to me like you listen to your parents, you all this other stuff. And so basically, what happened is that, and so what happens is you see that teacher more than you see your own parents. So therefore, you start to listen to the teacher more. Than your parents, so you so the teacher would say one thing, you'd come home and you tell them what we did in school, what the teacher said, and the parents would go, no, no, that's not true, I don't agree with that, and then the kid wouldn't listen because, well, well, my teacher says whatever, and the parent goes, well, I don't care what the teacher says, I'm your mom and dad, you know, we're in, but it's like, well, the te and see, well, the teacher said, you know, because see, we were indoctrinated because 
they're in this, you know, educational field and they know more than the parents and so therefore, you know, basically almost like worship them, worship them, you know, I'm a, you know, worship, worship them like a god in a sense, and you know, in that kind of way. So, but like I said, uh, academic, as you'll see in this video here, academics were a huge part of my life. Um, I took them very serious. Because again, at that very young age, I was already indoctrinated. You know, you know, you know, college. You gotta go to college. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. And um, <laughs> and I, I remember like it. And like and, and like this is just like one like random story I just thought I'd include. I remember the one time in kindergarten we had some one kid. Um, he actually like threw up on me and some other girl. I remember when he was just sick, and one day he just turned, looked at looked at us, and 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 just like projectile vomited, <laughs> you know, on me and some other girl. And it was like. Yeah, you know, welcome to school. Twelve years of this, you know. Of course, it is a kid, and you, you, you think it's just a freak accident, you know. But it's just like the good summary of what was to come, you know. you know. Being vomited on. And then, um, so then, uh, right before the first grade began, um, I was about seven. I had developed a majoring stuttering problem. You can kind of hear it already in this video, but um, it was nowhere close now than it to do you know compared to when it was then i mean it was like a machine gun just you know just and i'm not exaggerating that's how bad it was remember times like i had to like close my eyes to speak or i had to like like forcefully like, grab on to stuff to like talk and it it, it was really bad it, it just happened out of nowhere and I, I can't confirm this but i do think um that it was probably a really bad vaccination um, because again, like my, like most vaccinations, they are more harmful than good, and uh, there's I mean just thousands upon thousands upon thousands of cases where kids have just been vaccinated and something happened. So I think that's what happened, but I'm not gonna say 100% dogmatic that's what it is. But I, I have a funny suspicion that's what it was. Because again, to go to you know because to go to school you're required to have one of those you know. And uh, what else did I? So at the top and top it off. So this went on. Throughout, all throughout elementary school, you know, up to uh, fifth grade, um, they put me in like a, a special education classes. So every week, basically, it was me coming in there. They have a, like a the person who's in, excuse me, in charge of helping your like your speech, and they would help you talk really slow, like you know, like that, and you know, make sure you sound it out. Which you know, and and I will say by the end of my fifth grade year, it did help. I my speech was way better. But by the end of you know, middle school, it was already starting to come back. And by high school, it just it, it had returned completely. And um, so, yeah. Um, and, and again, this is just another random story I thought I'd include. I remember back in the third grade, it was. That would have made me nine. Yeah, I was nine. Um, we had a project. Uh, well, uh, well, I'll say it first. We would often go to a field trip. Um, to the plant term because something I, I need to explain about my my school was we're a, a a school corporation so the way it works I believe there's I think nine elementary schools I went to Horizon Elementary School and there were three other elementary schools in that district so what happened is then what will happen then is then those elementary schools they would go to the next middle school in that district and that and that would be Discovery Middle School that was the one I went to I went to Discovery Middle School and then those other three middle schools, well, they would come together, and then they'd make up the one big high school, and they, and they all like it all kind of you know, like met in the center of it. Okay, just, just to kind of explain that. So, well, a lot of times we would take a field trip to the Planetarium, which was you know located at basically it wasn't at the high school, but it was like right next to it. You know, it was you know a separate you know whole separate whole separate building, and we would go there a lot uh, all the time, especially in kindergarten. But I remember this year in particular it was my third grade year, and they had a project going. It was called, uh, what they call it, um, uh, Let There Be Night. Not light, night. And the guy who was in charge of Planetarium, he's had some, like, some community project he was starting up. And I remember, I don't know why I remember, well, I, well, I, I, I know why I remember this, because it was just so, like, wow, you know. We, <laughs> we were in there, and he's explained this project, what's going on, and it was, like, a homework assignment, basically, we had to do. And it was go out at night and, like, and, like, and, like look at the constellations at night. Um, it was a constellation Orion. 
one was. You know, very, very cool, very beautiful. But he was trying to prove that, oh, look at all, all the all the lights outside. You know, because of of the light pollution, you can't see the, the you know, like the beautiful stars at night, which is true. But he, this guy was such a, just a flaming atheist. And remember one point he goes, I, I, I remember this very clearly. He, he said like this, when God said, let there be light, he was wrong. He was wrong. And I, I remember him, he said it nice and loud, everyone could hear it. I, and I, I remember I brought that home to my parents and I remember my dad was like, what? <laughs> you know? Like, but, you know, of course, nothing was done, and it just kind of went on with life, you know. Uh, but I, I remember that, and it's, again, and, you know, like, and, and that stuff has a major effect on kids, you know, it really does. Because, um, again, kids are very easily influenced, you know, and it certainly influenced me. Um, uh, and so then, uh, at the end of my third grade year, I was still nine years old. Um, I discovered my parents were having major, major marriage troubles, and um, I found out about it. They, they couldn't really hide it much anymore. My dad kind of sat me down and explained what was going on. Um, because at, at, at the same time, the recession had had really, really kicked in. The housing market collapsed. Again, my, I said earlier my dad was a drywaller, so he has no work now. They, because the housing market just, I mean, it took a bullet. Absolutely was dead, done, gone. So... You know, so he had no work, and then my mom had just started to work again, but she was only working like one day a week, and um, and and just I want to say this very clearly, um, this what happened on, and this went on from nine years old to basically you know present day where it is now. Um, um, I'm gonna be 19 years old. I'm in a few days, so basically it's been really about 10 years of this. Um, safe to say, you know that I've been involved in this. Uh, has been one of the most stressful things ever. Um, I just I have so many stories, so many bitter feelings, and I, that I don't want to get into because um, we'd be talking for five hours. I mean, it, you know, and then some. I mean, it's just been it has such an effect on my life, and it was just. Uh, but I, I so I wanted to know it was just uh, there's so many things I could just just go off about and just go on a tangent, but I'm not going to for the sake of time. And out of respect to my parents. Uh, I want to keep kind of them out of this because again, this video is about you know my testimony, how the Lord Jesus Christ saved me, and I really don't want to involve them too much. Um, like I said, just out of respect and honor for my parents. So, but just know that this was an extremely stressful thing that just really weighed on weighed on me heavily and it affected me uh, greatly. Um, and then also another thing too, um, I was starting to become more bullied um, around this time. Because again, at public schooling, you're kind of raised to be like like some Tinkerbell, where you, you can't fight back and whatever, and just and because uh, again, I was always taught to be just a very nice guy, and then the, you like you'll get your way through life kind of a thing, and that's not the case at all. I was bullied, and and, and I look back on it too a lot of that was self inflicted because I was you know butted my head and stuff I shouldn't have, but you know it is what it is. But still, um, you know what? I got bullied, and that added to the stress, and you know because again, I was always a bit socially awkward. You know, because again, I think too, I was never really just taught like basic skills on my on my own. A lot of it was just, I kind of learned it on my own because I was always by myself because again, my dad, he was always at work. My mom, really, she really just, I mean, she was there, but we really just didn't do too much. You know, we just didn't. And so I was always alone by myself a lot of times and just like basic skills and were never really taught to me, you know, and just. Whereas it's a lot of things I, I kind of had to pick up on, and so but therefore that led to you just me me, me kind of being you know socially awkward at times. I mean I was still very friendly. I had a, I had lots of friends, but I was still kind of socially awkward. And then um, really and plus too because and this is one positive you know I will say about my parents of course they had shielded me from a lot of stuff. Of course again from you know, the TV and video games. Well no but they could I mean I mean they could have obviously shielded me from a lot lot more obviously, but they shielded me from a lot of stuff and. By the time, you know, is we were in the fourth and fifth grade, people are saying all a bunch of stuff I've never heard of, and they're using about every, every like, word in the book. And so eventually, I because of public schooling, I developed a pretty bad potty mouth. I mean, I started using all the big, you know, big bad words and, you know, whatever else. And it just really started to get more and more perversion, which I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Um, let's see. Um, so basically, at the end of my elementary year, that would have made me 11, you know, 11, 12 ish in that, in that range. I wanted to change who it was. I wanted to be, um, well, just basically like a rebel kid. I felt I wanted to be, you know, be who I wanted to be, you know, not some thing that is like, like that, that like society expected me to be or something like that. 
it just, you know, whatever. It was, it was rebellion is all it was. Um, so I had grew up my hair really long. It looked kind of almost like an afro at times because I because I have curly hair. If I actually grow up my hair, it does get kind of wavy and curly. Um, of course, now it's been cut. You know, short hair now. Um, I because I wanted to be like a like a, a rock and roller. My dad was a again he like I said he was in a band, so I grew up a, a lot, listened to all sorts of type of rock and roll and music, and that's what I wanted to be. I th I thought that's what I wanted to be. And because guy, you know, rebellious and it's tough and cool and all other stuff. You know, it's not, but whatever. So I grew that out, and then um, and, and, and like I said, going to middle school, that's always like that awkward age, you know, where you, you kind of like transition in. So I was, like I said, I had plenty of friends, but I was still, you know, pretty socially awkward, and and I had terrible posture, and I was always, you know, lean over, just like always hunched over. I had bad um, personal hygiene. I mean, I remember at times there was times I can remember. Like, like you see, like those, like those old cartoons about you'll see, like they got like flies, like flying around you. That was me. I actually had like at times there'd be like flies that always followed me. It was just bad, you know, and you know, and just so on, so on. And I, you know, like, like I said, I developed a really bad potty mouth. It was really bad. Um, and just like I mentioned before, I took my academic, my academics very seriously. I got, uh, you know, like uh, all A's, you know, like uh, like a 4.0 GPA multiple times throughout I have plenty of awards which I'll show later here in this video but I got tons of excuse me awards and accolades and then I, I also did follow my dad's steps as, as a bass player um, and, again, and uh, again he was very good at that too and uh, you know I'm not just saying that again because he's my dad no he, he was talented and um, so I joined uh, the school orchestra because uh, middle school they required you to play some sort of instrument your your first year of middle school. You could drop out the next year, um, but you had to do something or you know, choir or whatever else. You had to do something, and uh, because they they said um, you know you know music you know helps you know, stimulate the brain and people who are music are naturally smarter and they are that that is a scientifically proven fact. So I I played bass just like my dad did. So I joined uh, orchestra and this went on for three years. That's how long middle school was. You know, sixth through eighth grade, um, and I and I really enjoyed it because um, it involved me playing you know like the big you know like upright bass you know pluck it and we you know, have the bow and everything else. I'll show I'll show some pictures here, and then uh, and also some concerts even involved like the electric bass. And so we play you know more you know more like rock and roll type of stuff which I loved and. Uh, whatever else and you know and I was very good at my my instrument I mean I'm not trying to brag I mean I mean I got plenty of accolades for what I did I did multiple concerts and I was in like the advanced orchestra I was in jazz band I played at others other outside stuff and like I said I'll show a little bit more of that later here um let's see here so then also um I in this my seventh grade year that would have made me uh 12 13 I had joined the football team and I wanted to do sports well I had already done sports I already done like soccer when I was much younger but I really wanted to do football at an earlier age because you know again they have uh, you know like a, you know, a, a peewee football type of stuff but over here it's called it's called rocket football you know um, so I wanted to join that and uh, like long story short um, we, just, we never did it because again then kind of stuff that you know really involved my parents again I, I think is my mom really didn't want me involved in that so we just kind of it was kind of just you know just shifted away from me, and that was and that was just kind of like the beginning of the end for me for with sports because now that the in crowd was already being set up at that young age, so I was already majorly excluded from that in crowd. So when I got the seventh grade football, everyone thought oh, I was just going to be a fluke. I'm just some kid in the team, and I was going to quit eventually. But I ended up proving wrong. Not only did I not you know quit, I was very much you know a contender, and I you know and more so than just holding my own. I mean I did really well. I didn't start my first year. Um, I played as an offensive lineman and they started using me more on defense as the year went year went on. Because again, I was a very, very tall, uh, you know, big kid. Um, um, like, like I said, I didn't start, but the coaches were really impressed because they, they just didn't, they're like, wow, we didn't, we never knew, you know. But I was still kind of the outside looking in. Um, but so, I mean, so my first year, I, I kind of let it go. My dad thought I, I deserved to start, but I mean, I, I kind of let it go. I was like, hey, you know, it's my first year. It's, it's all good. It's, all, it's okay. But I mean, because this is, this really added to my um, charisma. Because again, I've always been a very, very outgoing person. But this just now, I, I had, you know, well, a lot more pride, a lot more charisma to me. 
Um, and again, it, it just, I became, you know, again, really, really just more uh, self-confident. Um, and like, like I said, very, very, very prideful. Um, cause I, cause again, I started, you know, cause I started, you know, being, you know, more like more, um, uh, what's the word up uh, flirtatious in ways and whatever else. Cause, and cause I, I was a, I was a pervert, you know, in a lot, in a lot of ways, which I'll explain here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> And, and and really my, my my thing was I was seeking popularity I was seeking a lot of friends because again I was I mean like I had friends but I mean they were more they were more like friendly acquaintances than anything else and uh, so I really um, thought okay I want popularity I want lots of friends I because again I was always kind of thought like the big like lavish lifestyle being popular that's really cool or whatever and that's that's what I wanted and um, so I tried more and more to get more and more friends and I did but that really led me to nowhere. Um, and another thing too, around this time, I had also been very conspiratorial. Um, I had seen plenty of shows, and uh, as my dad, um, we would watch together. I remember there was one show in particular we, we used to watch. It was called uh, Jesse Ventura um, Conspiracy Theory, or something like that. And um, there was a bunch of different like conspiracies they'd bring up, and they'd prove it again, like stuff like 9/11 and the whole thing. How that's just a flat-out conspiracy, and it is. I don't. I haven't changed my beliefs in that at all yet. And uh, I don't think, and I, I never will. <laughs> I don't know why I wouldn't. It, it, it is a conspiracy. It was totally rigged. Again, well, that's a whole other video. But the point is, I was very into that. I was anti-government because again, I was brought up in a you know very uh, I'm a, a conservative home, so I had a lot of you new know, conservative beliefs and which go contradictory to you know the public schooling thing. But I so in a lot of ways, I was very much like a liberal drone in a lot of ways. But I still kind of had like those anti-government, you know, conservative type beliefs, you know, with with uh, with within there. And also at the same time, I developed a major uh, porn addiction, um, and it was very bad. And you know, and it started out, you know, soft, you could say. Um, but like it started out from the TVs, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the TV shows, uh, the movies, the music I was listening to, again. A lot, most music out there it's very sexual just listen to the lyrics you know the, the video games um, so it started out soft and then I remember um, there's one in like one video game in particular um, it was the Sims and that was one game I, I started playing it's a simulation game you make up like your own fake little people called the Sims and you just and you simulate their life you know and you just do basically basically like you're your own god at that point you kind of just control them and you, and you do what you want with them and you could, you know, make him fornicate. And for those who don't know, that's the Bible word for, you know, you know, sex outside of the marriage bed. That was what that is. Um, you know, and sodomy and you know, a all, all bunch of wicked, wicked abominations you can do in that game. This is a very disgusting game. Don't, don't play it. Don't look it up. You know, um, it's terrible. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 just, and it just showed how much of a boring, pathetic life I had. Because I was, here I am, you know, playing your know, fake reality, you know. Not actually, you know, trying to, you know, live some life. No, I was just living a fake one where, you know, I'd watch my little sim, you know, read a book or work out when I could be doing that, for example, you know. But, of course, it didn't. And then, like I said, that led to more of the harder core porn because, and and, and I, I I apologize for, for saying this, but I, I want to bring it out and just say this. This porn addiction led to a very, very bad addiction to masturbation. And I apologize for bringing this up. But, you know, it is a part of my testimony, you know, and I would, you know, you know, get my thrill, so to speak, you know, you know, playing those video games. And um, it was just terrible. I remember at times, you know, because the, the, because the, eventually the porn really got more and more hardcore and then it, it turned it turned into sodomite porn eventually. Um, and I remember multiple times a day, just like seven, eight, nine times a day. I remember and this happened a few times. I was just watching porn and, you know, you know, then, you know, you know, getting my thrill, so, you know, so to speak, you know, because, and because a lot of this too, I, I got, I got, I have to, I'm, I want you to understand, I was just, the stress that was going on from, from the sports and, um, from my parents and from, you know, school and I just, a bunch of other stuff was factoring in, it was my, you know, like stress relief and it was only a temporary stress relief and it just come right back and right back and right back and it's just and it, it, it became a very very bad addiction and I also remember one point I had made a fake 
dating profile, multiple dating profiles, and I posed as a uh, as a lesbian actually, and I, I was uh, catfishing people, you know, because I thought you know, he he he, ha ha, it's so funny, you know, uh, just terrible. Um, what else? Um, and then also at the end of my seventh grade year, I also joined uh, the track team. Which again, I'll bring more out of my sports testimony, and that, that I actually had you know good uh, success with. Um, I enjoyed it, but I mean the main focus was just football. It was mainly just to kind of you know, keep me in shape, keep me busy, you know, because I was very active throughout uh, my middle school years. And moving to eighth grade, at eighth grade year again, my stress level was it just gone through the roof with my family. It was just really bad. Um, and uh, there's more tensions within my house, which is really bad. And uh, now this time I determined, okay, I will start football this year. I will start. I will play. I'm, you know, gonna, you know, gonna start. And uh, I had bulked up significantly. I put on a lot more weight, you know, because I was gonna be playing more offensive line. But also, I, I wanted to focus on defensive line. That's really, I wanted to be more on defense. That's just what I wanted to do. I wanted to, you know, do more, you know, tackling and hitting and stuff like that. That's just what I wanted to do. And um, so I, I shifted my attention to that position. I, of course, I, I still played offensive line, but I really wanted to be on defense. And um, and like to make a long story short, I'm, I'm going to bring a lot, a lot of this out in my sports testimony. I mean, I, I mean, I dominated my position. I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to boast or nothing. But I mean, I dominated my position. I mean, I clearly was the. The person I was, I mean, he, he, I'm gonna start. It was, I mean, it, and, like, and like I said, I'm not trying to have personal bias. It just, it is what it, it is what it is. I dominated my position, and I'm talking like when we were in drills, I was in almost like every other drill. Cause some people they are always like, reluctant to, you know, go in there. I was, I was one always jumping in every other thing, just any drill we did, just getting more and more. I just kept doing it. I mean, I was just busting my butt because I was just like, I'm going to play, <laughs> you know. I was determined, and. uh and like I said, to make a long story short, well, that didn't happen. Um, I had gotten injured one point because one of my problems was I didn't do enough running. I, I had done. I loved to ride my bike, and I, to this day, I still, I still, love, I still love to ride my bike. It's a great exercise. The problem is though, there's a difference between riding your bike and running. Um, riding your bike is good. It's good for your cardio and good shape, whatever else. But there's when you run, you know, you have, you know, it's your know, impact with your feet, you know, hitting, you know, hitting the pavement. You know, and just so the problem was, I didn't do enough of that, and I developed a very, very um, bad case of shin splints. I mean, it was very bad, and the whole muscle had basically just, you know, like just, you know, like ripped off, you know, my leg. It, it was bad. Cause I, I, I mean, I could barely even walk. It was just so terribly bad. Because uh, again, like, like I said, my my health, my diet was not very good either. I didn't stretch properly. I did a lot of things. Because it's just something that's never really occurred to me, and I was never really taught that. It just, you know. So, I really, I really injured myself bad. I was out for a whole week. I couldn't do anything, and then I could only, um, then I couldn't even run for a while. And then eventually, I started getting back into running. But then, since I've been out so long, then my cardio got really bad. And then it's just, then I, I gained a little more weight. It was, just, it was a mess. But even then, when I came back, I still dominated my position group. I mean, I still did, you know, you know, pretty good. And to make a long story short, I got completely shafted. Just for really no explanation, and my dad, he was there every single practice. There's only maybe like one or two at the most he missed. And it wasn't because he was trying to you know stalk me and put pressure on the coaches, or whatever. No, it was just you know, like I said, he wasn't working. The dry, the housing industry is dead. It's gone. So he wants to go watch his kid at practice because it was open practice, you should know. And I remember he he went up to one of the coaches and he got like up in his face and just started letting it rip. Just like, you have got to be kidding me. You know, I'm like, he, 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 he should, he's saying like, I'm just not seeing it. I am not seeing it. There's, and, cause, and you know, I don't blame him. And like I said, I'll get more into that in my sports testimony. Um, at the end of the day, I still got a pretty good deal out of it. I ended up, cause eventually they put me in rotation with, with the varsity lineup so and I I ended up playing a little bit off mainly offense and a little bit of defense here and there. Even even though I wanted to be on defense, they wanted me more for O line type of stuff and which fine whatever. So I I did give a rotation there, but then also 
we also have like a JV games, so they so so like they have like the you know the varsity games and then, then like the juice the, the junior varsity games. So then that those games I played the entire time. I played on offense. I played defense. So I was I, I was basically the only time I was not on the field was like was like was like on kickoff and kick return and uh, yeah. But other than that, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't every single play. You know, offense, defense. So at the end of the day, I ended up getting the most playing time out, out of everyone on the team. So in that sense, it it went it was all right. You know, that was pretty good. Still, it wasn't that starting position. You know what I'm saying? And so that that really infuriated me because it, it was just like I mean because I I knew my heart I had owned my position I deserved it but you know hey whatever it's it's life you know but I had just dedicated so much to it I mean I had worked my butt off of it and I can't stress that enough um, and then, like I said that year is also very busy I did I would did multiple concerts with orchestra the orchestra group was uh, very fortunate and um, we were asked to go play for I forget I forget what it's called I think it was like um, ISMA or some, some something like that. I forget the name of it. Um, it. But it was a really, really big, really, really big deal concert. A bunch of different, you know, professional groups and, you know, high school groups, college groups. And we were the only middle school. Well, actually, it was, it was very, very rare that middle schools even get in. Um, but our middle school got in. And then another um, middle school group got in. And uh, so we had to learn how to play some very, you know, tough songs. Again, like, we, we learned how to play, you know, like, Mozart. And Mozart, it's not that so much that what we played was hard. It's all just, like, the, like, very fine details Mozart would have. So, again, and we, and we just worked vigorously, very hard. And the, basically, that ended up getting canceled because that same year I was uh, 14. We had, like, that major blizzard that came through all across America. And, um... It was canceled and, and it never came about. And then, and because of that, a lot of people quit orchestra that following year w when they transitioned to high school because they because because we went through like just hard, very you know you know practices and our instructor would always just you know yell and scream because again our my circuit class was just very noisy and loud. Um, so I don't blame her. Um, um, and again, and I also that that the same year I also joined wrestling. My football coach, he really wanted me to join wrestling. They didn't have a heavyweight, um, so I joined it, and I actually enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I didn't do too bad my first year because wrestling is—it's I mean, it's very rare that a first-year wrestler can just you know, walk right on in and just you know, you know, dominate. It's usually like you have to do this for years and years and years. So I did you know fairly all right. I started, I started uh, as heavyweight, and I had a pretty pretty even you know like win win and loss record. Um, but you know, I enjoyed it. It was it was hard work. That you know, definitely wrestling is you know one of the hardest sports to do. Cause, I mean, because it's not team sport. It's one on one. You know, you know, you you you've, you've got to get at it. So, uh, I'll I'll share more of that in my sports testimony. And then I you know, I did track again the second year. And again, I had good success with that. I was in I got I started you know for that, and I got um, in the finals two years in a row for uh, for shot put and discus. Um, well, for shot put, I, I was terrible. <laughs> I did discus, but I was terrible at it. <laughs> and then I, I, but mainly it was shot put, and I, I won multiple events for shot put, and I was um, eligible to go to the finals, you know, to actually compete, you know, for the school to actually bring home the championship and get, you know, medals for it. Um, so that was that. And um, anything else I want to bring up here? And, uh, you know, another thing, too, is I remember, too, on the time, I, I became very heathenistic. And this transferred over into high school a little bit. I remember at times I would just, um, for the sake of it, I would just, you know, just, you know, pee on the floor. Or go, I'd walk in the bathroom. You know, just go pee in the bathroom. Not in the, not in the actual urinal. Just here, there, and, you know, whatever, you know. And, 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 and uh, I don't know how many of the kids did it, too, but I was one of, one of them. Just, yeah. Nah, it's just it's terrible. It's disgusting. It's just nasty thinking about it. That's who I was. I was just, I was just a pagan little heathen. Um, and then too, like like I said, my diet was terrible. I was very much overweight. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I always said I was fat. I mean, that's just my own words. But I mean, a lot of people said I wasn't. But I mean, I was a pretty big dude. The reason why I didn't look any bigger is just because my I have a very um a, a stocky frame, so my weight kind of balanced itself out. But if I wasn't stocky, I'd be a I'd be I, I would have been huge, but um that wasn't the case. Um, so it kind of 
balanced out, but I was still a really big dude. Um, and then, um, again, I remember times too. I remember there was times like I was like I was eating food as I'm like using the bathroom, like as as I'm going to the bathroom here, I'm just you know scarfing down food. Uh, it was just terrible. And then um, it, it wasn't any good food. It was all you know like you know like GMO. Ugh. Anyway, and one more thing for my eighth grade year. I remember we had um, my teacher, um, my science teacher. Her name was uh, Mrs. Weaver. It was. I had her for a second block. I remember, she didn't, like, she dropped a bomb on us because we've been told all our years that evolution is truth. Evolution is truth. You know, like we come from monkeys and you know, you know, blah blah. You know, all of that junk we've heard. Um, she actually told us. She goes, "Hey, that's not true," and we're all like, "What?" Because we we never heard any different. We we th we thought it was gospel truth that we you know we came from monkeys or whatever you know. And we're just like, what? And she's like, and she was saying like, yeah, you know, and she and she brought like people like Bill and I, you know, they're they're that you know, Bill and I's a liar, <laughs> you know. She said that in, in a public school, you know, which is like almost like unheard of, you know. I mean, that's, I mean, the, I mean, you'd get fired for saying something like that. Um, I I, I think she's still teaching to this day. I don't know, um, and I don't know if she was born again or none. I have no idea. I just do know she she said it was fake, and she would say like again they, she would even tell us like yeah like these like strands of DNA that they're gonna show you like here's like a DNA from a whale and a monkey. They said they're only giving you just a little fraction, but they're not giving you the whole thing that 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 proves that we're not from monkeys or what you know what I mean. You know, all of us were like wow. And at the time, it didn't I didn't really think much on it, but it did it did leave a little bit of an effect on me because just like she just flat out was like it's false. Now she's still have to teach it, and I remember just seeing multiple times that she's teaching it. She, I remember she just had like she just felt awful. She just like felt so depressed, and like she would basically because again she's forced to teach something she doesn't believe. She knows it's wrong, and she she has to teach it. You know, and I, I wish she would have got out of it. I hope she has. I don't know, but um, I remember that did leave that that did leave like a little bit of, of an effect on me. You know, um. So basically, then um, when I transitioned to high school, now all the middle schools are coming together, and uh, I went to Penn High School. And Penn High School is the fifth largest high school by attendance. Uh, it is very big, um, I mean, you know, very big. Um, hallways are always, I mean, cramped, and I mean, I'm talking cramped. You know, I mean, we're talking like narrow hallways, and they're forcing basically everyone to go down. It, it was terrible, you know, and and like they wonder why kids are always late to class. Well, you know. Um, but, um, when I transitioned over, um, I'd actually had decided to stop playing bass. Even though I was really good at it, I decided I want to focus, um, on sports. And, um, and so before I get into my, because again, a lot of things in high school really changed everything for me. And this, you know, my, my freshman year of high school had a major effect on me and I'll get into this more here. Um, before I, I move on, let me show you something here about, um, just kind of show you kind of who I was again from middle school, just more stuff about it here in one sec. Um, I didn't feel like wearing this. I get really warm. This was my, uh, Letterman jacket from middle school. That's my name, Thompson. And, um, here's the front of it. Because we went to Discovery Middle School. And there's the... Thing. The stars represent all the times I got 4.0, and I, and I have more. We still didn't put all the patches on it yet, which actually, yeah, right here. A whole bunch, a stack of other patches and stuff I never actually put on the thing. Um, just a whole bunch of chevrons here, and then my other arm would have had, you know, way more stuff on it too. Um, this was like for the pins I got in wrestling. I only got one actual pin, but whatever, it's fine. And then this is all the stuff I got from... An orchestra for playing my bass and the concerts we did, you know, a couple of silver medals and then what's this one for? Oh, this is like for the like state competition stuff we would do. And then these was all more stuff like that. Um, my uh, like a what's this one? This is a, an ensemble we did as a as a group. It was not written. A lot of these aren't required. It's just I wanted to go out of my way to do this with uh, with friends. Again, I got an award you know for playing like a, a blue ribbon for a, for playing a solo. You know, on the base and a um, bunch of stuff like that. So that's my, my kind of my jacket. And then because I even had um, 
I even had an award. It's not on my jacket. I had like the like a, I forget what it's called. It was like the Distinguished Music's Award or something like that. And uh, they only give a few out every year in middle school, and it's to like people who like you know excel at their at their instrument. Um, they take it seriously. They do a lot of work outside of school for their instrument. And because I was I was involved in the advanced orchestra, I was in a jazz I was in jazz band. I had another type of concert outside of school. So I got this award for being a distinguished, you know, like, like musician, basically, which is basically saying, hey, you're one of the, you know, better musicians at, at the school. So I threw all that away for sports because I thought, I'm like, this is my year. I'm going to do it, <coughs> you know. So moving on to high school now. Um... So, like I said, for middle school, things really began to, or um, my freshman year, excuse me, really began to change. Um, I'm going to quickly look at this. Um, so, basically, now I had dedicated a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot, to football. Uh, I worked out even more. I did a lot more running, so there'd be no worries about injuries. I did a bunch of stuff to prevent it. I was stretching. I was eating, actually, a little better. I had lost some weight and whatever else, and... Um, but this time I, I wanted to focus on defense full time now. No more offensive line. I wanted to be on defense, and um, I, I just enjoyed it more. Um, that's why I wanted to do it. And again, I will discuss more of this in my sports testimony. Um, so basically, the way this works when you go to the, the high school thing, they have like a, a freshman football team because they have the freshman team, and then they have the um, um, the varsity team. And then the varsity team, they'll have their uh, JV games there, too. The freshman team, there were no JV games. It's just this is the freshman team. All right? And um, and so basically, uh, I thought I did great. I was doing good. Um, I, I was I was with the starting lineup on defense. I was making you know, a bunch of different friends and gaining respect you know, from other players. And uh, this is going good, going great. And... Um, and so I thought, okay, good. I'm gonna be starting the first game. I I finally done it. You know, I was so I was so happy and excited, whatever. And uh, you know, and there's even talks, you know, of having like a rotation on the on the defensive line, which is hey, cool if we're gonna do a, like a rotating thing system where I know everyone's gonna be you playing. Cool, no problem there. That's fine. Because I I have I have no issue with, with like a rotation where it's like a steady like rotation of hey, people we're gonna keep rotating people in. So that, you know that that's cool. I'm fine with that. So it's not just like one guy gets all the planes. I, that, great. So we get to our first game. I didn't play a single down. Now imagine we're going through all summer workouts and camps, and I'm with the varsity group. We get to the first game. I didn't play a single down. I remember that just like that. I mean, that just, I mean, oh my gosh, that frustrated me to a core. I mean, of course, now that I'm, I'm saved, it doesn't really bother me that much anymore. But it's just at the time, I mean, oh my gosh, I was gonna, I, mean, I was going to kill somebody. Because again, all the stress, everything that's going on, it's just like now this happens to me. And I, and I, I talk to the, my, my position coach. I go, "What's up?" And, and he comes back, and, and he comes back to me. He, he, he comes back to me, um, and, and he goes, "We well, don't know what you're doing. You, you don't know what you're doing." I'm just like, "You're telling me this now." You know, and I, I will say this to you, like, our freshman coaches were terrible. They're terrible coaches. They didn't they didn't even care about coaching. They, I mean, it was, it, they were jokes. And I, I don't mean them harm. I'm not saying I hate them. I'm just saying it's a coaching thing. They're, they're terrible. Anyway, so that was that. And that just, I mean, that just, that just deflated me so much. I mean, it was, uh... And to make matters worse, at the end of the season... We had already signed up for a bunch of stuff because we're because we realized now because at the end of the eighth grade year, my dad and I realized we're not in the in crowd. So now the new goal is okay, Jake, keep up what you're doing, but now, um, we're, get yourself into the in crowd, hang out with more of the cooler people, you know what kind of thing. And then while well, he's gonna be, he's gonna be working on you know parents and the coaches, to, you know try to get our way into the in crowd, right? So we had signed up a long time a long time before the season was over just to help do like this thing for like the peewee football kids and they were hosting it at, at Penn's uh, football field and um so I was there to help out my dad work at, at the concession stands th there that day well one day well or, well at that same day one time I had gotten up to go to the bathroom well the one of my freshman football coaches who had already known me he was one of my elementary school teachers he also coaches the high school football 
um, he was talking to my dad, and they're you know, pretty friendly, and they're just talking, they're being chum. And my dad asked the question, "Hey, just be straight with me. What does my son got to do, you know, to start? What is he? What does he got to do to play? Like, what is it we're missing here?" And he's very nice about it. And you know what this coach said to him? And this this is my dad telling me this. I found I found out about this afterwards. He told he told my dad, and this is what he called him. He he, he told my dad. He goes, "Your kid is a system kid." And a system kid is someone. I'm just you know, paraphrasing here. Um, he's he, you know, he, he okay. He's on the team. He, you know, he's on the team sophomore year. He's on the team his junior year. And then his senior year, he's gonna get all the all like the um, like benefits and rewards and accolades of being a senior. And he might play. You know, he will play a little bit. He's not gonna start. We're not we're not saying that. You know, he could start, but you know, he, he but he see he's going through the system. So basically, I'm just along for the ride. That's basically what it was, and I remember my dad's was. He told me he said he took everything he could not to come out of his chair and just beat this dude up. I mean, the fact that you would say it to his face, you know, and it, and when I heard that, it just it was like a it was a punch. I, I, I the wind got knocked out of me. It was a it was a punch in the gut. I mean, I was just I was just so deflated. I was just like, I can't. There's nothing I can do. It's just ridiculous. I remember it just it just it just crushed me so much with all the stress that was going on in my life. It just ugh. at the same time that during school they were also again more so in Everett. It was just a hard push. They were pushing down with the whole like LGTB thing, just just ramrodding that down our throat. It's all we ever heard. This and this and this, you know. And like you're like oh you're some like gay you're like you're some gay hater you know you're some racist bigot all this sort of crap if you weren't pro that and again you know I wasn't for it but I also wasn't taking a stand saying it was sin I was just like nah you know whatever just I don't want to hear about it you know because I why I was lost I was wicked and then the same time I was waking up to the public school thing and what we were learning I finally was starting to see like you know. This is a bunch of junk. Because, like, like as, as you saw, I was dedicated to my academics. I had all A's, really great grades. I was, I mean, I was a teacher's pet. I mean, I, I, mean, I was a teacher's pet, all right? Anybody who knew me, anybody who, who knows me, who, 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 who went to school with me, knows every teacher just loved me, you know? Um, and, and to the point where a lot of kids, they would always come to me for help. So I was always helping them out with their homework and doing stuff and <coughs> whatever else. And um, by this time, I it, I became prepared to me like you know what this is a bunch of junk. It was this is complete junk. I finally understood and, and realized the evolutionary system of thinking. I'm sorry. I'm like I, well I, I'm not sorry, but when I was there, I mean I I was I was going like you know what. What do you mean? Like, I, it, it finally dawned on me. It was just like, wait a second. You, we come from monkeys. It is. It is. Not, you never really, really think about it. It's just like, wait. We came from monkeys. My ancestry goes back to back to some monkey who flings poo at the zoo. It just kind of, you know, doesn't really sink in. Like what? And then plus two, they show all like those different like evidence you you come from like not like neanderthal man and all sort of junk and it's just like then they, they can't show you like like like, like the transitionals to them and i i just couldn't get past the fact like you know wait a second you're saying we come from monkey which came from you know like, like a fishy from a bird which came from you know some like aquatic animal which then that came from plant life which that came from a rock which that came from some gases and i i couldn't get my head or i could not wrap my head around that and I, and I was just seeing the contradictions and the holes. I'm like, wait a second. You can't prove that. You've never observed that. It just finally dawned on me. I'm like, this, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And, um, and I'll say this also at the same time, too. I had also, you know, had become a little more interested in the Bible. I was watching a bunch of stuff on TV. A lot of it was junk. It was mainly the History Channel, which if you've ever seen their, their stuff, that their theology is absolutely terrible. Uh, it really bad. It's really bad stuff. I mean, I heard some bits of truth throughout, but it, like I said, it was just bad. It was terrible. And so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever, you know. Um, 
but uh, like I said, the evolutionary system was just junk. And then my other classes, and which I will get into this in my my rant about public schooling, because that's where a lot of a lot a lot of the bulk of my stories come from, which is my high school experience. Was just I hated high school. So I hate school so much now. I used to love school. Uh, if anyone knows me now, I hate it with a perfect hate. Like I said, I'll get into that in another video. But I remember, I remember just stuff like it just, it just. I, I was seeing the contradictions. I was seeing like just a repeat of everything we've already learned. How about even though I'm not really learning anything, and it was just like the same old stuff every single time rehashed. The teachers didn't care. The staff didn't care. Our guidance counselors didn't care. I mean, they even at one point actually told us that that all all the stuff we did in middle school it doesn't even count. It doesn't even matter. Colleges don't, colleges don't even look at that. And, I'm, and I and and I I I thought to myself like you know I just busted my butt throughout middle school for nothing and you're and you're literally saying it was for nothing like they weren't just trying to say well you know no they were like it doesn't it doesn't even matter I'm just like what I did all that work for nothing you know and, and then you get to high school it's the same material that we already learned I'm just like you know just a couple more details I'm just like what like what zoo house is this you know. And plus, when I, when I go to school, it was the first time in my life, I really just, it, you could actually feel the darkness. Even though I was lost, it was just, it was just so bad. You could just feel it in the air. I just, I hated, I just, I dreaded going there every single day. It was, it was some of the more, like, more like worst parts of my life. It just, I just had complete misery and just sorrow in my heart. You know, a, a, a worldly sorrow it was not a godly sorrow. Barely worldly. Um, I was just, you know, sorrow over myself, really. Not sore, sorrow towards God, and just the plus all the added stress from home. It was just ridiculous. And I guess I'll get more to that in my in my school testimony. Um, and then um, it was just bad. So then wrestling that year, I so then I then I shifted my focus into, to, towards wrestling, and then wrestling was a complete downer. Um, I got injured. Um, we were doing um, it was it was an er, very early on in the season. We were doing drills. We were doing a um, a, a a single leg um, takedown with a drill uh, 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 with my partner. I, I was wrestling. I was wrestling in, in like in like 220 weight class. I was no longer heavyweight. I was now 220 weight class. And so he he had had um, my you know my leg. You know uh, he was holding my leg because we're, we're drilling right, and um, he has a control of my ankle. So the drill was okay. You, you gotta you know, get out of it, whatever. And so I he had a really good grip on it. I turned, my ankle did not. And so basically my whole leg turned, my, my foot stayed in place, so I, I just, I shredded the muscle um, in my ankle. I was, I basically missed the entire season. I got back at the very end, but at that point it was just kind of worthless, you know. Because my cardio was bad. Because cause, cause plus two, when I injured, I was, I was yelling to like, I was yelling at the dude like, hey, let me go, I'm hurting. And so I dropped and I, I fell on my elbow. I think I, think I uh, hyperextended it. Cause then I had like, cause then I had like no strength in my right arm, so that I couldn't even like you know, do do like upper body workouts. It was it was just terrible. It was just absolutely terrible. And then I and so I basically missed all that that season. But it was all. But that same season though, we also we also won our the school's first ever um, state wrestling, a team team wrestling um, championship. The first time our school's ever done it. We've had like um um uh, champions before, but not as a team. We never had it. So we the first time we ever did it, and we got, um, you know, we all got rings, you know, state rings for it, you know, the blue ring. Um, mine doesn't really fit much anymore because I've lost so much weight on my. It doesn't even fit my finger anymore. I mean, you you can kind of see it here. Um, show right here. Uh, you can't really see it. It, it isn't going really to focus, but it says you know Kingsman 2015 with the state logo on it, and then. Here, ha there it has my name, and my weight class, and it has two guys wrestling on it. Uh, there you go. You can kind of focus in now. And then just on the top, you know, the blue, blue diamond, whatever it is. And um, so have a ring. And um, that's kind of that. But I remember during this time, I remember my stress level had entered to just. It was bad. I remember I actually was in fear of having a heart attack because my chest was like it literally was like hurting so much. So I was like, I was actually kind of scared. Like, am I gonna have like, a heart attack? Because my stress, like, it really was that bad. So I remember at one point in time, I actually tried like meditation. And like, uh, and 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 what I mean by that is, I actually would sit like cross-legged on the floor, on the floor, and I'm going, oh, 
uh, owned. <laughs> thinking that was gonna help it, and of course it didn't. I, I, I it didn't help anything, and, and I, and I felt stupid doing it. You know, I was like, oh, I'm like, man, forget this. You know. So I tried breathe, breathing exercises, and that kind of worked, and but not really. Again, the stress was there because again, the music I was listening to was very heavy, very raunchy, very just depressing and oppressive, and that didn't help. Um, just the stress from school and everything, it was just bad. It just, my stress was just an all-time high. You know, the porn and all the other stuff along with it, that didn't help, help my stress relief. No, I mean, I was just, it was just bad. I, it's just, I, I can't describe how bad the stress was for me. It was just, it was just terrible. I, at times, I had contemplated, uh, suicide multiple times. Um, it is what it is. And then, um, so basically at this point, my, my interest in the Bible had really started to change. By this time, I was actually already saying prayers every night, but and uh, you know, and during during like during like like the football season, whatever else. But I it really felt like no one was hearing me. That's what it felt like. I was praying, and, and my prayers weren't very long. A lot of times, I would sit, you know, like cross legged on my bed, or I would just kind of you know like lean up against the wall and just kind of like you know, you know, just pray like you know like whatever. And I don't even really remember what I prayed half the time. It was just dumb stuff, really. And, um, I always felt like just, I, I felt like I was just praying to open nothingness, you know, just like, just air. And I, and I, I, I stopped praying at one point that eventually I started kind of praying again. Cause I'm but just, I just didn't really, I'm just like, but it really felt like no one's even listening to me. And I, I, and I even wondered, is there even really a really God up there? But, you know, but like I said, when, when I, when I understood that evolution theory was false, it also, I, I, I came to the conclusion, I came to the conclusion, like, you know what? God is real. The Lord Jesus Christ is real, and He's the one who created everything. All right, that's what I came, I came to the conclusion to. I knew Islam was false. I knew all the other religions were false. All this other stuff is false. Now, like I said, I was not a saved man. I was very, very, very lost, very wicked. Um, but at that point, I understood that God, He's the Creator, and we're not just here on accident. We're here for a reason. And like, I didn't have the truth yet, so I didn't know what it all meant. Um, but with that kind of out of my mind, now, I, you know, out now with this, I, I still had my evolutionary mindset, but I was like, okay, you know what, these, these facts don't add up. Um, and then I, and I was seeing a little bit, and I was seeing some, I'd seen some evidence actually for the creation, like for the flood, no, I actually seen some evidence for that, like, like, like archaeological evidence, I'm like, oh wow, you know, that's, that's amazing, you know. And so it, it had, it, I had a new perspective in life. And but all this was going on while I was still stressed out. It really didn't sink in. But I remember there's one night in particular. Well, actually, here, let me look at my notes. I don't, I don't want to m miss anything here. So, yeah, I, I mentioned earlier I was watching a bunch of stuff like in the History Channel and whatever else. And, again, their theology is terrible, but I was still watching a lot of it. Um, and, again, they didn't really explain anything. It was just the same old stories. Back when I'd heard from Easter Sunday, I, as I mentioned in the beginning... It's basically all that stuff again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, you know, of course, and they'd have some prophecies. They, they had, well, they had plenty of prophecy stuff, but it was, it was just always like this, always like this open-ended. You know, some scholars say this, and they they say this, and then this, and then and they'd give like and they'd give like the all these different arguments, and then like then like they bring in that Catholic scholar who would set it straight. You know, and um, basically. Um, at this time, the Lord really started to work on me. Um, I remember there's a few times in particular, um, I was just kind of by myself, and I, you know, and I, and I just, I really felt more alone. I just felt, I, at this point, I just felt so alone. I felt empty, dark inside, like I never have before. And I remember, um, I said to myself, I'm like, okay, well, I'm like, you know what? I'll just do more good. I'll just kind of be more good. I'll do more good things, have more of a positive attitude about life. And you know, I just got to go do, you know, you know, you know, do good, you know, and whatever else. But there is one little seed of truth that I heard somewhere in my life. And that voice just in my head kind of told me this. Um, it just kind of happened. It, it, I heard the voice of like, of like, it's not of works. I, I somewhere along the line along the, the line of my life I'd heard that and it it, it it I kind of froze I'm like well I'm like because I knew me, me doing good that would that be working for my salvation I'm, I'm trying to merit it you know by my own righteousness and I, I kind of froze when I, when I when I said it myself I'm just like uh, you know okay but I I, I moved on I, I pushed aside and then that, then that same thing actually happened again and I I really started to get freaked out by it 
uh, to make a long story short, I eventually started getting online. I started doing more and more research um, into, into God's Word and whatever else. And um, I remember every night, really since late December, this is, again, my freshman year, so that would have made me 15 at the time. Every night, I was just watching more and more and more and more and more, more videos off my uh, uh, Chromebook all these different videos, and a lot of it was just a bunch of prophecy videos, which had just led me down this path of, oh my gosh, I mean, some of the, just some of the, I mean, of course, now that I'm saved, I can see past all that stuff is junk, but at the time, I was just like, whoa, you know, <laughs> and, um, like, it was a mess, though, and I was always getting confused, because this person said this, he said this, he said this, he said this, da, 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 da. but I came to one conclusion at one point, I because I, I again I had heard of the mark of the beast. I was seeing that I was seeing that the beast system was here. You know, you know, we have the technology. Is what I'm saying. And I was like, wow, this is really scary. This is really bad. And, but I was led to believe, okay, I'm gonna have to endure to the end to be saved. I was I was told I'm gonna have to go through the tri you know, go through the tribulation, and then you know endure or, you know or be martyred and whatever else. And I was told America is mystery Babylon, um, all bunch of stuff. And just everything was just a mess um, with it. And I was really confused, but I was still kind of watching and I was still kind of learning from other websites who just, it was just all messed up. And again, this person, he's quoting this Bible, he's quoting this Bible, which at the time I didn't know they were quoting new versions or different versions, but, you know, that's what they were, that's what was going on. And um, let's see where I'm at here, my notes. And, but really, at this time, though, I was actually starting to get scared because I didn't know if I was actually going, going to go to heaven when I died. I was actually wondering, like, because the question popped into my mind, like, you know, Jake, if you die today, or, die today, are you actually going to go to heaven? And it just, it really started to scare me more and more and more. I'm just like, you know, I don't know. I, I think I actually might go to hell. So at this point in time, I'm watching all these prophecy videos, and now I'm feeling, I got, like, you know, like that, you know, feeling, because I... Because I'd gone through like the emotion, the emotional like roller coasters and all these videos and propaganda stuff, you know, like put you through. So now I thought, okay, now I'm saved, you know. Now I'm, you know, now I'm a, I'm a true Christian. Because I didn't, I didn't hear the word, I didn't hear the term saved. I didn't even heard that term. I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, I guess I'm a Christian now, or just I guess now I'm, I'm one of his, or, or what, you know, whatever. I, I, w I was, I was still very self righteous, and I thought I had found it. I had, you know, earned it. Is basically what I thought. You know, that's kind of what I was thinking. Because I done, I because not, and I thought, oh, I I've reached that inner goodness I I was looking for. Maybe I was right. So you know, you get like that, you know, like those feelings you see you see a lot today. And um, where where am I on my notes? So so eventually, as I'm watching all these prophecy videos, I came across one individual in particular. His name was you know brother. Uh, Thomas Watkins was his name, and he had a channel called Bride in the Wilderness. And um, I'm at at the time, this guy sounded like really good, you know. Uh, he he's been since kicked off off uh, YouTube. Well, well, what well, he did, and he did it to himself. He just stopped making videos. He was a major false prophet. I believe in, and uh, a lot of people did as well. He was claiming that. He was one of the two witnesses, and this guy is like he—he's like some just like some white gentile. Um, he claimed he's one of the two witnesses. He claimed to—he claimed that we were we were going to go through, through the tribulation, but it, I believe in a mid-trib as he did. That we're only going to go have to go through half of it or some to that effect. Um, and then, you know, he um, also taught that he actually prophesied to the Antichrist himself. That the Antichrist is already on the earth. We don't we, we don't really know about it yet, but we, only he does. And it was uh, it was in the it was in the form of ISIS. He taught um, like an Islamic Antichrist. He he actually taught that the Antichrist was Osama bin Laden. I'm not joking. He taught that it was Osama bin Laden because again he, his his logic was okay because the Bible says beast from the sea and he says okay now see the beast has like a wound to his head you know he, he has a deadly wound to, he has a deadly wound wound that was healed and he's like well look guys Osama bin Laden he was shot in the head and then, and then when the, and then they, they threw him in the ocean so see he's the beast from the sea that, that was his logic you know which of course at the time I was just like oh you know <laughs> wow you know 
thought it was great, you know. But it that <laughs> couldn't be any more false. But <laughs> I mean, it's fun. I can't I can't help but just laugh at it when I think back on it. The guy is so stupid, so lost. Um, but uh, I also at the same time I was having those like prophetic dreams you hear people talk about all all the time here on YouTube. I had one of like those dreams and I thought God showed me a dream, you know, kind of thing and. I, I made a big made a big deal about that, and um, I even told him that 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 false prophet Tom Watkins. I emailed him. I go, man, I'm like, man, you, you gotta hear this dude. You gotta hear his prophecy dream, and he you know listened to me. And he, it, I, I actually I still have the email on my computer. I, I might just show it. I don't know. Um, so even though I thought I was still a Christian, I there is a part of me though that still felt wrong. It still felt empty. You know, like just something wasn't right. And um, and why? Well, because I was I was still trusting in my self righteousness. I was still trusting in me. I was just kind of like believing in you know, I'll, you know, believing in Jesus. I re really I was just I was ascending uh, assenting to just a bunch of you know facts up here. It was not down the heart, you know. Just to make a long story short, this is uh, we're talking late summer now. I'm gonna be um, a sophomore coming up. I was already practicing for the next year of football because I was still in the football team. Well, I had now moved to you know to the varsity team, and this was in late uh, late July, early August. I cannot remember the date. Uh, I wish I did, but I I don't. It was late August, early, or I'm sorry, late um, July, early August. There's just one night in particular. I was watching more more prophecy videos, and um, I was just getting so scared. And one in particular just scared me half to death. Um, a lot of what was said in there was wrong, like theology-wise, but it was just scaring me. And as all of the stuff I've been going through, the stress and whatever else, uh, I had finally just I broke down. That was good because the the Lord Jesus Christ was like really working on me very much. He was working on me a lot, and um, so that night um, in particular. I had never heard the plan of salvation. My entire life, I've never heard how to be saved. Uh, of course, throughout, I knew I, I was told. I was told, you know, you're a sinner, all have sinned, type of thing. But just you, that's it. It's just you know, you know, all have sinned, but you never really have. There's no you know personal accountability for you know for my sins. It was just you know some general. Okay, yeah, we're all sinners, and you know, and you know, and go on and on and on. And um, that was that, and again, I was never the gospel was never clearly explained to me. I understood that Christ had how that Christ had died for my sins, and that He's buried and He rose again the third day, the corner of the scriptures. I had, I had heard that, but I just never it was actually present to me in a gospel like manner. So I was like I said, I was never told how to be saved, never my entire life, never told how to be saved. But so this particular night, I just I broke down. I I got on my knees for the first time in my life. I got on my knees. I've, n I've never prayed like this before. It was, it, was, it, was on, it was on my bed. I had slammed my, my laptop shut. And I got on my knees. And I just started crying. I mean, I it was just like, it was just a river. Just coming out of my eyes. Just I was just crying so much. And I, I, and I just started saying, I, I was just like, I was just like, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I, and, and I was just saying it. Because I just knew deep down, I was just like, I was like, Jake, you're a rotten wretch. You're, you're, you're just disgusting, you know. I knew deep down, like, Jake, you're a rotten sinner, and you're going to hell, and you know it. Like, I just knew, like, I was like, Jake, you're you're going to hell, and you know it. And I, I was just so terrified. Like, I, like, like, I didn't want to, like, I did not want to go to hell. Like, I, because, like, because I knew if I died today, I'm like, Jake, I don't think I'm, I, I, well, I don't think, I know I'm not going to heaven. I'm a wicked person. I've excluded God. All I just, it just, everything came to a boiling point, and I just, I broke down, and I just started just, I just started yelling. I was like, God, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just sorry for everything I've ever done, you know. And I'm just sorry. Just, you know, please forgive me. Just have mercy on me, you know. And I remember, and I, I asked him. I said, I said, I said, Lord. I said, Lord. I said, just give me truth. Just show me the truth. I want the truth. I'm tired of being confused, you know. I just want the truth. I said, I said. I said, I said, I said, I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. I want to live a life for you and only you. That's all I want to do. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I said, Lord, I go, I don't know how to get there. Show me the way to get there. Show me how to get there. I want that. And, I remember, and that night, that night, I just bawling tears. He saved me. And um, for those who don't know, for those that are saved and know your, and know your King's Bible, you know, you, you, probably, you probably picked up on what, I, on what I was asking for. 
Um, and I, I never heard this verse all my life, never heard it, but I asked for those, for those three things that, that, that Jesus claimed to be. And in John 14, 6, he said, he, he said I'm the, this is Jesus speaking, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Never heard that verse my entire life, but I had prayed and asked for those three things. And um, so that, that night, Jesus Christ saved me. Um, I was 15 years old. I can't remember the date, but that was the night he saved me. Um, he saved me from my, my sins. He he saved me from hell. And um, now I'm, I'm, I'm one of his children. And uh, you know, I'm born again, and all glory goes to him. Um, I mean, I, I cannot say how many things he, he's just done for me and what he has just changed in my life. And I'll kind of explain this here in a second. Um, it was just, I just, it was just an amazing thing. I remember that night, cause I, cause you've heard me say now for forever, my, I had just immense stress and I remember just all my stress in that moment was just, just, it was just gone. I just, it felt like everything, all my stress was just gone in that instant. And I, and it was just, I was just weeping and, and, and my, my tears almost torn, my tears were kind of almost turned to joy because I, I, I didn't, I didn't know I had gotten saved yet. I had no idea that I was saved. I just, but I knew something had occurred. I didn't, I didn't know what it was, but something happened, and I was just, I just felt so much joy amongst all that sadness. I was, I had never felt a, a peace, a, a joy about me I've never experienced before, and I was just like, wow. Um, so, to continue the story, what happened? Oh, let me make sure I got everything in my notes real quick. Um, okay, so yeah, so almost finished here. So, um, after this, the, like I'm talking, like the very next day, I was out and, and, and uh, I was out, I was out in the living room with my dad, and we're just kind of talking, and he just out of nowhere, point blank, says, "Hey, Jay, do you want a Bible?" Just point blank asked me, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, I, I'd like one, yeah." And we had no, and we had no discussions discussions about this prior. He just, he just asked me point blank, and. Um, we didn't get it that day. We got it like a few days later. And it, was, it was like the next few days later. I forget which, which, which day it was exactly. But then my dad asked me again, so do you want a Bible? He's like, yeah, sure. And it literally felt like the Holy Spirit was just like just forcing us out the door. So Because it, it, it was just like, yeah, just go, 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 go. We were, you know, we, you know, let's, let's just go get one, you know. So we did. We went down to a Barnes & Noble and uh, we went down to the, you know, like the, the Christian uh, section. And then again... He, he, after walking up, he goes, uh, he goes, um, he goes, um, um, uh, let's go with King James. Um, I think KJV is the best. And again, we, 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 we did, we, we knew nothing of the new versions. We knew nothing of the new versions at all. He, I don't think he's ever, even, I don't think he's ever even, ever even read a King, a King James, but he's, he said, Hey, w w let's go to King James. And I, I firmly believe that was the Holy Spirit using him just to, get me to the truth because again the bible says sanctify him through the truth thy word is truth again i was asking for truth and so he led me to the truth so my dad bought me a king james bible and we grab it this is my first ever um king james bible right here um i care and i carried this thing with me ever uh right when i got home i just started i started reading this thing now uh, i did make the mistake <laughs> Of not, you know, starting in an easier spot. Like most people, they'll start in Genesis, or they'll start with Matthew, or they'll start with Romans or John. I didn't do any of that. I started instead of starting in the beginning. I started at the end, and I, <laughs> I, I read the book Revelation, which is not the smartest idea. What I did, didn't understand it, because again, to understand Revelation, it's not that Revelation is hard to understand. It's just you kind of have to read everything else to kind of get it, you know, and um. So you know, that was a big mystery to me for a long time, but I carried God's word with me everywhere I went. I just I I I I, up, I upheld this book everywhere I went, and um, and of course I just had like a I wanted to tell everyone about it. Like I said, I had no idea I was saved, but I just like all I wanted to do is just tell people about about Jesus Christ, tell people about God. I'm like, and I remember too, I would just like everywhere I went, I had my Bible, and I'd make sure people would see it, you know. I wouldn't witness to him or nothing because I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to or whatever. But I would just make sure everyone knew this is who I am, <laughs> you know. And because um, at, at the same time, I also had started up my YouTube channel, which I had uh, titled it JT Does. That's where the name comes from. For those who are wondering, because it was going to be a channel where I was going to do everything. JT Does, 
whatever. It's, it's, it's going to be one of those channels where I just do a whole bunch of stuff. And, well, that changed. Um, now I started making my videos about, you know, about, about God and Jesus Christ. You know, because well, you know, you know, Jesus Christ is God, of course. But I'm, the point is... My first video about this again, it's it's I, I'll tell you it's bad. I mean, it's I had a lot of things wrong. I was very confused. Um, I had just been like saved for for like a week, and so I, I in that video you can watch it. I said a, I said a lot of things are just well, they're wrong. They're not true. But I just and I didn't know what to say. I just had an outpouring of just like so much peace, and I wanted to tell people about Jesus Christ, and you know, just just amazing. And I just I remember I, I just devoured His Word. I mean, I, mar I you know I marked up. You know, I've marked up you know stuff and you know in his word, yeah. You know, you know it's just like a color pencil. I just you know mark important verses or stuff that I learned. Um, but interestingly enough, I want to bring this up also. Um, it wasn't that very day, but it was the next day. I was on YouTube, and um, when I was at Barnes and Noble, I had seen this this you know Bible. It was called um it was called the Lego Bible. And I thought, oh, that's great. It's cool for little kids, you know, which it's not. Um, but I thought it was, right? So I got on YouTube. I, I, was, I typed in. I was watching videos on it. I watched a few. You know, fine, whatever. And then I came across one video, and it was titled Lego Bible. And I, I never heard of them. It came on, and I'll, 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 I'll never forget this. It was a great video um, by a man named uh, Brian Denlinger. His channel name is husky 304 xp and he, I mean, he just like ripping this thing to shreds. I was like, because it got my attention. I was like, whoa, you know. And he started showing documented proof that this guy is a, is like a, just like disgusting sodomite. He's an, he's he's actually an atheist. He's just ripping parts out of the Bible. It was just terrible and just like, wow. And and the, one of the one of the, the first thing I ever learned from the Bible was you know was uh, through his ministry. You know, uh, with through with, you know was through his channel through through Brian Denninger's channel. Was the thing of was, was the thing of do not add or subtract from His Word. That was one. That was one of the first things I ever learned from the Bible. You don't add or subtract from God's Word, and because uh, again, another thing that that really intrigued me was He would always say, you know, turn in your Bible to, you know, go and go to your Bible, and because before it was always people just you know, preaching down to you or they just put the scriptures on screen. He was actually saying. Go to your Bible. Go to your Bible. It was just like, oh, so so when he said, that, I'm, I'm like, you know, like I'm like running to get my Bible, you know, trying to find where it's at because I knew I had no idea like where any of the scriptures were. So I'm just like, you know, fumbling around. Where is it at? You know, where is it? You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know. <laughs> but that, that's what I learned. And then I I checked out his channel some more, and then I learned about the whole conspiracy with, with the new versions. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, and I was just blown away. Because I had knew, I had known that like new versions had existed. Like, again, like I, because again, I knew these existed, and I knew there were some versions that were you know, easier kind of thing. I had heard of those versions. I was not aware of all like, just how many there were, though. I couldn't believe it, you know. And then he showed the conspiracy behind it. Like, hey, these people, they're trying to get rid of God's word, the Kingdom's Bible. The Kingdom's Bible is God's word, and here's why. He showed the manuscript proof for it, and then why these are corrupt, and like, and then he started talking about the Catholic Church, you know, church. Uh, how they're just so evil and wicked. And I was just like, I, I was mind blown. I had no idea. Because again, I live right by Notre Dame University. I had no idea. I, here I am, like, you know, like rooting for, you know, room for the, you know, room for the enemy. You know, go Irish. You know, I had no idea. I mean, I was shocked. And, um, to make a long story short, I mean, I, I've been, a, I've been with his, you know, ministry for about three years now, just, you know, learning under his ministry. And, uh, I've learned a lot from his ministry. His ministry has been a great blessing to me. I mean, the Lord has shown me so many things through his ministry. Um, so, um, so Brian, if you're watching, thank you for all the hard work you've done. I really do appreciate it. It's, uh, your ministry has been a, a tremendous blessing to me. Um, the Lord certainly has used your ministry a lot. And um, I, I learned a lot from his channel. And there's, and there's plenty of others I listened to that were good. Uh, yeah, you because know, at first I listened to I listened to like a lot of false people too. I mean, I mean, I remember I, I listened to well, just a whole bunch of false teachers. They were just really bad. I was a babe in Christ. I didn't know any better, you know. So whatever else. So um, I will say this too. Also, as I'm I'm trying to wrap this up the best I can. Um, the Holy Spirit has just well, yeah. The Holy I'm I'm trying to think how to word this. Just Jesus Christ, all around has just 
changed who I am. He gave me life. He gave me He gave me what I asked for. The way, the truth, and life. And that's what Jesus Christ is. He He gave me all those things. Uh, he's changed my life around uh, dramatically um, to the point where I've learned so many things. I've been able to witness to people. I mean, I've given out people, you know, just gospel tracts and um, Bibles. I'm doing, you know, YouTube videos like this one. I'm currently you know, working on, you know, like a board game, well, you know, like a study game for, you know, to help learn the Bible. I'm learning the Bible. I'm doing so many things for the Lord, you know, which I would have never, ever, ever done as a lost person, ever. Now that the Lord Jesus Christ saved me, he just completely changed my life. And all, the, all the stuff I used to do, you know, TV, you know, all the, the video games, you know, the, the pornography stuff, um, you know, just all the bunch of stuff just started slowly leaving the rock and roll again I was a everyone who knew me knew knew, knew I was the the rock and roll guy again I had I showed all, all those awards I got that left to cut my hair which people were, were shocked because they thought no, no one thought I was ever, ever going to cut my hair but I did you know and and, I, and people and I, and I would talk to people and I would say I would say like look Jesus Christ changed my life you know he changed my life he totally changed me and of course some, some of my friends they don't want to talk to me no more because I've, you know, I've tried to give them the gospel, and they think I'm crazy, you think I'm weird. And I'm like, well, you know, so be it, man. You know, it, that's your choice. You know, I want I want you to be saved. You know, I'm just giving you what Jesus Christ has done for me, and I'll try to give them salvation, and they don't want it, but that's a different story. I'll discuss that more in some other videos, but um, to, just to kind of finish things up, um, I'll explain more of this in my in my other testimony videos. I'm gonna put a put an end on this one basically, and I'll kind of discuss more of my other testimony videos when those come out. But basically, um, to, to kind of speed things up, um, I did I didn't I did another, another year of football, and really there's a whole bunch of drama with that. So my inevitable just I had enough. I quit the at the end of the season. Um, you know, I sat down with the coaches, and I'm just like, look, this, it ain't working out. I'm sorry, done, bye, you know. <laughs> And then I focused a lot more on my attention to wrestling, so I was getting more success from wrestling. I was winning, you know, tournaments and I was winning matches and that. Um, so I put more of my focus towards that. To eventually, um, I had quit that because I wanted to do, you know, more work for the Lord. And because um, again, a lot of things they were doing in, in, pra in practice in the locker room, it was, just, it was just vexing. It was disgusting. I, I just, I got tired of it. So I wanted to leave, and the Lord kind of let me out of that. And plus, too, with my academics, I didn't even care anymore. I still kind of cared my sophomore year, I mean, but then my junior year, I I, I kind of cared. But then second semester, I just totally didn't care. My second semester of my of my junior year, um, my my 11th year, you know, junior year, I had a 2.4 GPA. Didn't care. I was like, I don't care. I'm done. I've learned nothing here. It was just a joke. And then... Um, you know, now as I'm filming this, you know, I've graduated high school, I'm done, got my diploma, that's gone. And, uh, you know, also to tell you, because I I'd mentioned also, you know, my parents had a bunch of issues. Well, at the same time, as I was graduating, they had gone through a divorce, and now they are, they're divorced, they're separated, they're done. And, um, so, you know, it is what it is. It was, it was a long time coming. And, um, but like I said, everyone, I wanted to just do this video just to kind of, show you how I got saved, what, what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me, how he changed my life. And I want to, for those out there who are not born again, I just want to tell you, there's nothing on this earth that that um, that you can do to merit, you know, to merit your own salvation. And, and what I mean by that is you have to stop trusting in yourself. You need to stop trusting and you know, you, quit being yourself righteous. You need, you need to drop your pride and humble yourself and realize, look, you're no good. You are a low down wretch and I, I'm not saying because I hate you I'm saying because that's what the Bible teaches and because it's a fact you are I am you know he is she is whatever you know everyone else but no what about you what about your personal sins all right that's what I'm trying to get you to understand that's why I gave this video I want to show you just kind of who I was how Lord Jesus Christ has saved me and how what and what he's done for me how he changed me and um so thank you everyone for watching this video, I know it was a very long video. Hopefully, I got out everything I need to say. Hopefully, you uh, you understood it very good and you know, clearly. And uh, so, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope this is a blessing to you all. And just uh, so that that's that's my testimony. 
of how, how the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. So, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. God bless you all.